Hey, what is going on, you guys? Welcome to One of Each, the Dumb and Hungry podcast, where we talk about our food adventures and our favorite food groups. I'm Angelo, the Dumb and Hungry. And I'm Macho. Thank you for joining us. Hope you're doing all right. My chat's another week gone by. How are you doing? Yeah. I'm doing all right, you know. Just another day of the grind, or another week of the grind, I suppose. The grind, the corporate American grind. Living yep. the dream, right? The American dream, sure, sure. Yes, where we work many hours so that we can pay for things that are probably too expensive and to support. Like rent. Yes, like rent. And to um, participate in leisurely activities and serve by people that, unfortunately, we have uh, the burden to basically support their living wages. Because uh, corporate America refuses to do so. Enough about that. What's going on? What else is going on? Um, I went to Disneyland the other day. Disneyland. Well, Great. My last trip there for a long time because uh, a friend of ours got us in for free. Mm. And that won't be happening anymore. That's right. When, it's, uh, when it ain't free... It's yeah. just hard to justify. <laughs> Once you get that taste of um of the benefit, I guess. Uh yeah, it's just it's totally different. You totally see it differently. Like that's great. Okay. So tell me about your date Disneyland. I was a bad. We were asked to meet up at eight in the morning to get in for parking purposes. Um so that was fine. I was able to wake up, no traffic, the dream. Um, parking was could have been bad actually because I guess the line got too long to get into one parking lot so they coned it off but by the time that we got back by the time that we got into that section they, they reopened the, the Mickey and Friends parking lot thankfully Interesting. like okay. as we were about to turn away they opened up the cones to let us in mm. so okay. very convenient that yeah, lucked out there that's good yeah I mean not too many rides honestly we did rise of the rise of the resistance. That was mm-hmm. that was the first thing, of course, because that was the shortest that line was ever going to be. And it was like it was still half an hour, but that's short for that ride. Do you remember then, like when we, uh, you know, when that ride first came out, and uh, you know, I think we had visited there early on. Um, yeah, you know, this is still, you know, at, obviously in the. Like the peak of COVID, or just oh, it was, it was just before. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, it, it was, was January 2020. That's right. And, um, you know, they had the reservation system and, uh, yeah, you had to, you had to get a lottery basically in the morning. You had to, you had to yeah. go like through this almost like a lightning round of, uh, you know, reservation. And, um, if you're lucky, then you get something and, uh, hopefully the ride didn't break down before then or something. Yeah. Um, but even then the wait was still what, at least an hour. Something. Maybe. I don't, I honestly don't remember how long the wait was, but I do remember I had an interview to go to, or sorry, an orientation to go to that day. So you had to ditch us. I did. Yeah. I was able, the last thing I did, I was able to get on that ride. Cause it's for, right. I was like, fuck it. I don't even care. Right. Um, cause it was like the, when it first opened up or whatever. Right. Mm-hmm. Cause it opened uh, six months after Star Wars land opened up. And then yeah. I had my annual pass at the time. So and it included parking for mm-hmm. that one. Well, not that it matters. I forgot. You, if you leave, you can come back with the same parking ticket. You're good. But I left after the ride. Like, I was late to uh, to the orientation or whatever. Um, because I was like, well, we're in this line. We've been in this line. I might as well, might as well see it. Um, worth it. And came back to Disney for the fireworks. Because why not? So, I mean, in the end, you didn't really have to face any, like, real consequences. Nope. Okay. It was great. Well, then it it worth mentioning that it, you know, it's worth taking risks. Yeah. Never punished. <laughs> At least good. for this. So, you did a, you did a rise, and uh, you, had, you did that, and, uh, and then what else did you get to do? Oh, right. Because um, it was, uh, we, I was with Oli, like, we were with Oli and one of her friends, who, um, and she had never done Smuggler's Run before, the Millennium Falcon ride. So we went to do that one straight after, since it was, we were already in the area, but as well. Now, which one is uh, Smuggler's Run? 
That's what the one it? where you're uh, millenn- in the Millennium Falcon driving it around or shooting or engineering inside of it. I don't know. Okay. I, I don't know. I actually don't know what they do. Okay. All right. So you knock that out, you know, in the morning. Uh, and then where else do you get to go? What, what, yeah, where do you like to go and visit in the park when, you know, when you're there? Honestly, like when I had my annual pass way back and didn't mind just spending maybe three or four hours at most at Disneyland, it was all Star Wars area. <laughs> Oh, just man. because okay well it's I'm new I, I think it's new it was it's, new at the time yeah novel and yeah yeah but, but you say you're a fan so it makes sense too but yeah so i did that but we we met up with uh carmen and and john and mm-hmm. uh also tomo and canara oh nice uh, and uh henry and mindy were there as well oh okay very good we met there. up with them for lunch good so that, that was cool that was nice uh was hungry bear cafe hungry bear diner i forgot what it was called yeah um, near the by the river yeah yeah which they had a a churro funnel cake mm. and oh, it was good. good yeah yeah it was a seasonal item apparently but i'm glad i'm glad we had it because the churros we had in japan were sad really did we talk about that i don't recall i don't know i don't remember it was it was when we were at disneyland that's all i remember and it wasn't good but you just repress that memory because it just i guess so great okay okay well glad we have something here that's uh that's decent at least corporate america yeah. for something right not costco god damn it <laughs> rip still still <laughs> upset about that one i know not only did they change it they just got rid of it all together and then they replaced the it. new recipe was garbage yeah it's too and bad they knew. and they replaced it with a a cookie you know Oh, that's right. I heard it's a big ass cookie, though. I've tried the cookie. It's um, how is it? It's decent. I mean, it's a cookie. You know, I, I'm not complaining about it. Nothing. Uh, okay. I mean, it's typical Costco. It's like just a lot for what you get, and um, just a lot, right. and it's not offensive in this case. So, oh, um, good, good. Yeah, but it's 750 calories too. So, but who's counting? And? Yeah, what? <laughs> <laughs> good point. Um, yeah. But yeah, churro at Disneyland always hits the spot, you know. Uh, hopefully, they don't change that anytime soon. Um, honestly, it's good. How long do you stay there? Uh, we're actually there all day, because mm. um, Oli likes to be there all day, I guess, and her sort of her friend. So we we're there for over twelve hours, which is the first for me in a long time. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Just you're really you're just really milking that, just making the most out of that, uh, you know, that perk. I guess so. So, well, it is what it is. It's fine. Yeah, it's still a good time. Okay. So you stay. So with that said, I mean, like you must have stayed obviously till the night with like the fireworks and you know whatever. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So we did a bunch. We went to. We got beignets. You know, Pirates of the Caribbean. Mm-hmm. Um. I don't remember. I think that was it. And then we went over to California Adventure. Um. They did some shopping at the. Elysian, I think is what it's called there. That first store on alongside the the main yeah. street of right, right. California Adventure. Mm-hmm. It was also food and wine uh, festival. Apparently, still uh, we oh. f- completely okay. forgot about it. Mm-hmm. Um, not that we had any of those offerings, but it was nice to nice to see. You know, like there wasn't anything that really captured our interest for food are, and wine. Are there any uh, rides there that uh, you know you, you'd like you'd like to go to or visit? When you're on that side, honestly, I don't know because all the lines are so long nowadays. Mm. Like even Goofy's Flight School, which is arguably the best, the scariest ride in all of Disneyland. Um, Fifty minutes, five zero minutes for that. It's crazy. Mm. But we did uh, Ariel's Undersea Adventure or whatever it was because my or her friend never has never been on it, so we did that one as well. Yes. Um, so it was nice, you know. Just good to sit. Yes. Yeah. Sitting is very uh, underrated these days. Yeah. I haven't done the Spider-Man ride, which mm-hmm. is just opened a couple last year, a couple years ago now. I don't even know. Um, but be, having said that, my favorite ride at California Adventure is usually, um, Toy Story Midway Mania. Because it's an interactive ride. It's the one where you're shooting at the uh, the screen. Is that thing where you, like pulling, you're like pulling something? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. You're okay. pulling the thing, and then it it's like a 
carnival games basically but virtual mm. and on a you're on a track yeah yeah so that was that that's my favorite just because it's interactive it's basically a video game yeah that's cool that's why i think i would like spider-man's ride because it's also similar yeah but i never haven't tried it but you haven't gone on there yeah i think that's nah. definitely more interactive the wait oh really that's the web slingers is that what we said yeah 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 i think you'd enjoy that one certainly yeah uh, okay definitely a little it feels a little more immersive i think and oh really maybe a little more realistic in uh you know the action you're doing to whatever goal you're trying to do i don't know sling webs right yeah so sure. okay yeah i'm i'm pretty good at that <laughs> um, we did san francisco uh, oh, yeah. The Big Hero mm-hmm. Six area. I've right. never been there before. Yeah, so that was exciting. Since did you opened, got did a... you try out the uh, you know some of the the food out there uh, in that area? Honestly, I did not. I did, however, get the sipper, the Baymax sipper. It's right here. What is it? Because it's the uh the souvenir cup thing for Baymax. Uh, why don't you uh show us a little closer here? Yeah. It's like this. Uh, okay. It's like a sippy cup yeah. thing. Or yeah, whatever. with a straw. It's so cute. I just like Baymax a lot, honestly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's on his little charging thing. Nice. Great. I, I haven't watched uh, Big Hero 6 in a long time. I'm sorry, what? No, no, in a long time. I, I have. Oh. I have. Okay. But... About to say. It's a fun movie. It's like Endgame all over again. You heard of that? That's a good one. That's so I heard. <laughs> again, it's nice to, to go, especially when... um. When it's free, I guess. So yeah, when the we, mouse pays, we thank the generosity of uh, of our friends who uh, who can uh, honestly yeah. get us in like that. But uh, it might probably might be a while uh, until we find ourselves a uh, stepping foot on a uh, on a theme park like that um, to pay. I mean, even uh, prices just in general to for admission is just gone out of control, yeah. right? I mean, you know, yeah, a little bit. I remember when we went before pandemic, you know, we had the, uh, the SoCal pass, you mm-hmm. know, a lot of us got that. And that was, um, I think it was like 200 bucks for three visits. Right? Three days. Yeah. That's yeah. Not what bad. is it now? It's like not that anymore. The SoCal pass. I don't even know. Let's, um, um yeah. While you look for that, I forgot to mention mm-hmm. there's the, um, I forgot what the restaurant is called now, but, but we went back to Disney side after, uh, and there's I didn't realize there's a place that did grilled cheese and tomato soup that sounds familiar right, yeah right by Main Street mm-hmm. not Carnation Cafe but the one a little further on okay. the left I forgot Jolly something but so as much as I love grilled cheese and tomato soup mm-hmm. they also have a toasted cheese birria sandwich thing oh yeah yeah I think I remember trying that out that's pretty good it was actually, I was surprised at how much I liked it, honestly. It was really good. Nice. It happens to be called the Jolly Holiday oh, Jolly Bakery Holiday. Thank you. Cafe. Yeah. Which sounds, you know, it should be a seasonal thing, but I think it's just there. I mean, yeah. I guess it could be whatever I, holiday you want, menu. right? I guess no matter what. Yeah, like season chum is. is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. But. Because we can't, we went back that side and it was a uh, night already. But we lucked out at because uh, the fireworks were about to start, and we were able to get a table mm-hmm. there, so we were able to watch the fireworks as we eat. Because even after the lot, like the fireworks started right as we got our food, so it was perfect timing. So that was really cool. I've never yeah. had that luck before. That's good. Yeah, those uh, SoCal passes are going for uh, two twenty five, or at least you know, they listed you know seventy five a day, right? So. Not bad at all, actually. In this economy, sure. Why not? <laughs> yeah. Not what it was, but still not too, still doable. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Disneyland is the way to go. That's pretty good. Um, but, you know, I still need is to that- get out to, like, those other Disney parks. And I haven't been out, I haven't been out to, like, Disney World or whatever, let mm-hmm. alone international. Like, we were talking about Disney, Tokyo Disney and stuff like that. It's uh... Yeah, well, skip Tokyo Disney and just do Disney Sea. So, the other okay the other right. one in japan i see um, but i think disneyland is uh you know they have plans slated for expansion you know the park here you know in anaheim so um, oh really yeah i don't know what those plans Where? are but 
I don't know. How do they find the space? Are they going to knock down another? Uh, where do they find the space? Who knows? You know, money talks. They just buy stuff. I guess. Just buy out things, so, yeah. We'll see what it comes with. That's fine. Uh, maybe not because we won't be stepping in for a while. So, um, okay. once it's done, I'm sure five years later or whatever. <laughs> for me, more like uh, 10, 15. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it's crazy. It's like when we had, again, gone, um, that was back in 2019. Um, I think before that, I think it was been so for you, long. yeah, over you 10 years that. easy, you know. Yeah, I think since you were a kid, kid, yeah. I mean, I didn't even go to um, grad, grad night. night, yeah, so you didn't yeah. with that, so yeah. definitely a long time. So I don't know what I was missing, but you know, maybe the only thing I'll miss is you know, riding the train, you know, but um, oh, yes, the perfect ride to see dinosaurs in the Grand Canyon, yeah, exactly. Take a a time traveling trip out there, but it's um mm-hmm. uh it's okay. We'll uh we'll find we'll find some other time or some other way to get there. So you know, for myself, I um I don't really know. I'm just trying to think uh what's been going on. Um but but something I, I do want to mention, I I'm sporting a, a shirt that um I hadn't worn in a long time. And it shows oh. because it barely fits, but <laughs> um, but still fits is the important part that's right um uh but you know it's um over the years i've been lucky to uh procure or receive a number of different uh apparel and swag and things and um <laughs> you know and and this one is one of the uh the ogs i think this is a shirt from uh ragtop ferns and uh, oh yeah. hey yeah so this is uh you know a picture of uh of a smoker lucifer uh, where he would uh set up right outside the uh From the his apartment point out there yeah. yeah and um yeah i'd like it's been a long time since uh since i've i've hit him up or you know tried out his stuff but i think he's working on um actually kind of refurbishing or repairing that smoker so oh you know he's cooking with other other tools and stuff, but um, you know I think he's still waiting for uh, bringing this back and getting a full you know a good cook on. But um, yeah, I mean, I and then I was looking, you know, in the in the drawer I got it from. There's several other places, mostly barbecue. <laughs> uh huh. Surprisingly. Well, it surprises nobody. <laughs> you know, mostly barbecue. Yeah, and so I, you know, I think I should uh, look into uh, just kind of cycling through these. Maybe when we do these, just uh feature uh you know apparel times of uh of some of these guys nice. um i don't know but this was a, this was one i thought but like i said yeah it's um it's not showing its age but it's showing uh showing my uh my age of expansion so that's uh yeah for more of that we need to do the uh paid subscription speaking of expansion <laughs> <laughs> oh i see yes thank you <laughs> <laughs> Thank you to uh to our listeners, you know, our uh our viewers, you know, uh our little community of uh of people who um who tune in and and see us do whatever this is. Um so again, thank you to our few and only fans, really, uh, joining us again as we talk about some of uh this nonsense, you know, but um we'll throw in some some other things in there as well some food adventures, some local spots and pop-ups and you know, just some, yeah. yeah, good food and other things, you know, in, in all the nonsense that we uh, kind of throw in there as well, but it's all in good fun. Right. Yeah. But, um, you know, what, uh, Mike, I wanted to kind of talk about, uh, today is, well, not surprisingly, just eating, you know, of a course. lot of eating, but what else um, is there? we're kind of catching up here, to be honest, um, you know, since uh, we're kind of resuming, you know, our uh, uh, this again. But, you know, from the time since since, you know, there have been a lot of places um, out there, obviously, a lot of places uh, that are still waiting to be explored, to be tried, to be to be enjoyed, to be confuddled by, to be. I don't know, to uh, um, experience a profound enlightenment. I'm not sure. Okay. Some of, <laughs> uh, 
um, any mix of those things, I think. But um, regardless, it's all in uh, the name of good food, I think. So um, what I wanted to kind of go through, um, and there's just so much to, um, we'll, we'll probably have to continue this fun uh, for another part, but I wanted to go through a list of places that, you know, I've eaten. Um, in, I don't think we have enough time in the world. I don't think so either, you know, but we're just going to do what we can and fit in what we can um, and just kind of engorge ourselves in uh, <laughs> the smorgasbord of, I don't know, delicacies that are out there. Yeah, you got that. Uh, again, thank you to our few and only fans. So <laughs> we have many spots that have been visited, but, you know, there's no, you know, like, Many food creators, content creators in general, you know, they will parse through their content, their list. They'll probably put together something that's like kind of meaningful and um, something that's, you know, kind of, yeah, meaningful and like accessible in the way that, oh, here's a li like a list of top five things that you need to try. Here's a list of my favorite things, you know, my top five, top 10 things I need to, you know, mm -hmm. that I like. Uh, this is not that. This is not... No. No, this is um this is not a top uh whatever list. This is not a ranked list. Um this is not a review uh list. This is nothing this is not an in-depth, you know, exploratory, you know, exposition on, you know, the the state of food. Um but it's really a list of places that I've eaten. That's that's really it. If yeah, you ha yeah. if you happen to catch something that you know interests you, uh, that you would like to try as well, go for it. You know, have at it. But um, this is not really uh yeah. There's there's been little to no filtering as far as like whether this place mm -hmm. is good or not good. I'd say you know all the places though that we will talk about here and you know maybe in you know another part. I mean, I, I generally did like, you know, I did enjoy okay. for whatever reason, you know, I, I, you know, a number of these places probably could have been featured already in some sort of list and, you know, is already popular in some way. Um, but some may not, some may be places that I have not tried before or places that, um, you know, I'm sure I might've seen on someone else's social and, and just wanted to try it for myself. Um, but whether it's good or bad is, uh, I'm sure I'm to be left to the person trying it, you know, uh, to your own personal palate, I would say. Um, but I would consider myself, I'd like to consider myself someone who likes to try things and be open to, uh, try things and generally, you know, appreciate them for what they are, you know, even if they're not you know, necessarily like a Michelin gourmand or whatever. I mean, even mm -hmm. uh, each each restaurant, each pop up, each you know spot has their own place um, in this city, in this community. Um, so, I mean, I so I just this is again, this is just catching up because we you know we just need to. Blah, that's basically what just mm. you know what I mean. <laughs> what a shame. What. <laughs> Uh, what a way to spend, uh, you know, weekday evening. That's pretty good. I'd say <laughs> <laughs> maybe there are worse ways to spend the evening, but, um, this is one way. Um, the, the real only or the way it's, uh, organized though, there's, there is a level of organization, uh, oh. that we wanted to do it by uh kind of region, you know, kind of area. So, um, kind of broad region. Without uh, further ado, let's um, let's see what we can we can get into here. Um, one of the first things we're going to start off in the uh, in the San Gabriel Valley, and so that's obviously a very broad area, and um, obviously you know one of the big things you know of the SGV is a bastion of cuisine of the Pan Asian diaspora. What does that mean? <laughs> There's exactly. a lot of Asian food. <laughs> okay. That's all I needed to know. But um, we're going to start off with a non-Asian food here. Actually, really? it's, it's, <laughs> but 
but it happens to to you know fall in that region again these are big buckets you know that we're throwing them in here that whole preamble is just a waste i know um so the first we have here is uh actually from um we had mentioned previously i think yeah uh before i do that what what are you eating Oh, well, like a salad wrap that Oli just handed me. Oh, that's nice. Not that I'm complaining, but from a California California Chicken Cafe. Okay. Well, thanks for the invite. You're always free to come over. <laughs> not that we'll have food, but not guaranteed. There won't be an yeah. We'll be fighting over a lot, you know, a lot. <laughs> Yeah, we don't have food. We go out for food. All right. Um, but we did men so this place we mentioned last week um was from oh, last know, week. my buddy Jose, who um oh. started to do this uh this pop up. And um it's called uh Bun Project and uh for you know, at least you know what he's doing right now, it's based out in Arcadia. And so um he's doing these smash burgers. The thing to try I think that's really what it is. You get the smash burgers, you know, in this case, of course. you know, he's, he makes a couple of them. He's got this, uh, fried onion one. He's got, uh, kind of this, um, kind of road stand burger with shredded lettuce and things like tomato and things like that. So, um, yeah, it's not a complicated menu, but there you go. But it was good. Yeah. I'd say so. Now, um, while we're, in Arcadia, mm -hmm. at least in that general area, one other place that uh, you can visit, um, you know, uh, nothing says, I don't know, um, Asian culture phenomenon, <laughs> something more than a good boba, right? Really? Don't you agree? I don't know. Sounds kind of, kind of. I'm going to say, much. I'm going to say yes. Boba is really, boba is life. I think. Is it? Okay. Yeah, I think. I mean, even there it says, it even says there on the, so I'm showing here a picture of this place called AU79 Tea House. Uh, and even there on the picture, um, it says there on the cup, AU79, way truth life. I don't know what order to read this in. Um, but it's a way of life. Um, so I found this place actually, um, from a podcast I was listening to, um, the proofed podcast from America's test kitchen, and they were covering the, uh, the history of, uh, Boba, you know, oh, where it came okay. from, or like even the name Boba, things like that. You know, it's a very, mm -hmm. you know, uh, it originated from Taiwan and things like that, yeah. you know, bubble tea and whatnot. Anyway, so, um, the reporter from there um grew up in this area and particularly you know sgv and mentioned this place and so i thought i'll try it you know yeah uh, you know on um when you look for it you know on yelp or whatever it doesn't look anything like um uh out of it's nothing out of the ordinary you know it's a looks like a typical boba shop um you know typical flavors you know a, just a small hangout spot so, mm -hmm. and it delivers, I mean, but I really appreciate the, uh, the boba itself, you know, the, the, the boba, right. Mm -hmm. Um, it's, it's just really, it's warm and chewy, you know, okay. too often, you know, with just high production, just, uh, high volume, whatever boba things, it can tend to be like a little, just it can be hard, I guess, you know, it's not You're going to the wrong places. Yeah. Okay. Well, oh. whoa. support that claim. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what, I don't know what places you're going to, but like Yi Fang's never let me down with their blood with always nice and soft. Um, a little tea uh, mm -hmm. is also pretty good. And a little on the, uh, it's got like, it, it's on the cheaper side, thankfully. Mm -hmm. Um, Cause it's like, uh, got 2019 prices for Boba. There's like $5 for a milk tea which is great these days. I guess I'm not trying to generalize that every other place I've been to has been trash because that's not the case. But I think oh. I, you know, just by having this recently, I was just trying to think back. 
I mean, I really enjoyed this. I was thinking back, like, I wonder if I enjoyed it as much with other places, mm. you know, but, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's a bit of a trip, you know, I mean, even for either of us, I guess maybe, but to go all the way out there, but, um, if ever, you know, I'm in the area, like at least in the SUV, I, I will, I would like okay. to stop by here. You know, this is a nice, nice yeah. spot. Six to six. Let's go. Yeah. The six to six. So the next, uh, next spot we're going to talk about, I don't know where are Wait, we? We're... What'd you get? Oh, this is a mango flavored milk tea. So Filipino. <laughs> I know. And it was, it was, um, it was nice, you know, it yeah. tip, you know, you know, the, the, the compliment these days, right. Uh, is not too sweet. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. 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 So it, um, it was nice. It was, it was kind of, um, yeah, it wasn't too strong that flavor, but, um, Good. again, I, the real highlight for me was the boba. Mm. A nice chewy boba. So that's Arcadia. We're still in the SGV. Now we're going to move down to Monterey Park. And um, the place we're going to mention, uh, we were there together. We went to a duck house in uh, out there. And the move, of course, is the pecking duck. Um, again, uh, pecking duck, they're different, what do we call them? Like styles, I guess. Maybe different levels, different tiers of preparation. <laughs> Of the pecking duck, um, but this is, I think, what would be considered the top tier, in that you have this really, you see how it's prepared. It's like you know, it's cut, you know, um, separated skin from you know from the meat. It's uh, it has that nice crispy you know skin that's prepared, and it's you know cut up as you see here, and presented in a nice way, um, and then you they serve it with the uh, you know the 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 cho the sliced vegetables and the uh what do you call those the, the um the, the Chinese pancakes? tortilla yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> perfect that's exactly. what it was let's be real <laughs> yeah exactly um you know the thin crepe like you know yes tortilla <laughs> yeah they even said tortillas on the container okay <laughs> that's right that's right yeah you can see, you can actually see the cover here in this big like kind of the bottom yeah um yeah. It, it was served in a tortilla uh container um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah, so it really tells you what, uh, what they're going for. So, um, but yeah, duck house is, is the way to go there. Um, yeah, now, that's one of three ways. That's right. I mean, they prepared it in, in different ways. Um, mm -hmm. they had it as a, in this pecking duck. Um, they had it as a, was it a soup? It was soup. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then there was a third way. I recall? think it's the bean sprouts that they mixed it uh, in with. Bean sprouts. Look at that. Thanks for remembering that because I would not have remembered. But that's the move. I mean, like, you know, we ordered a whole bunch of things uh, because mm -hmm. we have no self-control. But uh, we definitely, you know, again, the thing to try certainly would be the, the pecking duck, you know. Def yeah. And, and there are, and again, this, again, this is not an exhaustive list because, you know, I can just hear... I mean, it's just the voices in my head. I mean, really, it's just like asking, oh, why didn't you go to this place? Or like, what about this place? It's like, okay, well, I didn't go to those places. I just happened to go here. So you criticized yourself <laughs> like that in your own head? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I'm doing it right now. <laughs> oh, no, I'm so sorry. Uh, the next spot we're going to talk about um, is in Temple City, uh, Bistro Ooh. 1968. This is a, a, a one of a many great dim sum spots in the SGV, and um, uh, you get you know I remember coming here the first time with uh, Jamie and uh, John. Um, it was kind of newish and uh, very popular, still popular, and it was still relatively new as far as you know um, you know it's where it had been established. So I think when we first went, they're still kind of figuring out the flows of service and things like that, but. You go here, of course, for your typical dim sum. You get your you get your shumai, your hargao. You know, uh, we've talked about nice. the the fried footballs that we still can't remember the yes. name of and uh, things like that. It's um, good. That's all the that matters. But uh, they they serve them. It's it's higher quality. It's uh, larger portions. You know, oh. you know, for dim sum, right? Larger pieces. So mm -hmm. um, of course, it comes at a at a you know higher cost, but. I think uh, in this case, I think they deliver well and uh, something definitely to uh, to try. So, you know, that's uh, that's out there. While we're in Temple City, um, another place um, you can try 
if you're looking for a desserty thing, is mm-hmm. this place called Coconut and Company? I assume that's what Co and Co, but you know they want to be slick with the naming. So, um, yeah, it's cute. Yeah. So um, I forget specifically like style or region they're coming from, but it's a lot of coconut, you know, uh, flavor. It's just basically coconut mm. beverages, you know. In this okay. case, this was more like a slushy, you know, kind of uh, kind of deal. And you can see the uh, the strands of coconut, you know, there in the bottom. Mm. Um, they, I, I was here with uh, with Jamie, and um, you know, we we had, she had found the spot, so we tried this. And they were nice enough to also have us try a couple like dessert things that they had. They have this um, this kaya dessert. Kaya is like a combo of um, coconut and pandan. So oh, okay. uh, yeah, it's kind of a yeah. It's not as strong. Are you okay? <laughs> I don't know. Hold on. Well, let me get it. What the heck? Well, hopefully, uh, Machi uh, is okay. That's fine. Okay. Just throw on the bed again. Yeah. Easy peasy. So uh, we were talking about... Um, coconut and coconut co. Coconut desserts. So yeah, that's uh, that's the move there. Um, we had... Uh, Jamie and I had gone here after we had visited... Uh, we had dinner in uh, Pasadena. Um, and that's at a spot called um, Colette. And so... What is what, that? What we're showing here is um, the dish of crispy, I forgot the exact name of the dish. I think it's crispy chicken skin, but it's crispy mm-hmm. stuffed chicken skin with the shrimp paste. Mm-hmm. So they actually take out the, you know, they separate the, the chicken skin, right? They they fry it and then they um, they place it with this on top of this shrimp paste. Mm-hmm. So... Um, Definitely a a worthy dish. So uh, Colette is um, kind of a Canto style, you know, restaurant. They oh, also okay. they also do dim sum, um, you know, on I forget when, but they they offer dim sum as well. But you know, we were here for dinner, and this was the one the thing we wanted to try. So that's yeah, what we did. looks good. Mm-hmm. I mean, anything with extra skin as well. Chicken skin is great. It it turned out really nice. Really enjoyed that. Mm. So we uh, wrapped up. Actually, we've we've um, conquered the San Gabriel Valley. Conquered, you say? And <laughs> now we're gonna march over uh, to the uh, other. March, you say? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. We're gonna march on over to uh, to the oh, other no. to another valley, uh, the San Fernando Valley. There's uh, a couple places we're gonna highlight here. Uh, the first is in Studio City, and mm. it's. Um, this spot called Boreca, Borecas. And um, Borecas is, well, Borecas is the actual food. It's uh, it's an Israeli dish of, uh, mm-hmm. you can see it's a flaky pastry filled with savory fillings, whether it be uh, like cheese or mushroom or spinach, you know, there are different types of fillings that this can have. Um, mm-hmm. And it's served with, you know, the, you can see these, these boiled eggs, um, some pickles, the red, um, there's the, the larger red container is tomato pulp. And um, I think the darker red, uh, I think that's what they call the shug, which is a spice. I'm sorry? Shug. Oh. Yeah. Okay. I know what I said. Um, and so that, you know, I think whatever you get there, I think you'll be happy with, you know, it's, it's not, obviously it's not a sweet pastry, but it's, it's really flaky. It's nice. It's pretty satisfying. They also have a sweet item that's not traditional or typical, I should say, uh, like with a chocolate filled Boreca. So it's more of a, again, like a sweet pastry. Um, but yeah, that's, um, that's a great place there. Um, in North Hollywood, you'll recall actually, uh, this spot of salsa and beer, um, when, uh, Oracle? yeah, you remember we were, um, oh, after we helped John and Carbon move. Yeah. Yeah. We were, um, oh. forced into indentured servitude. <laughs> and so we got paid in our favorite currency. <laughs> that's right. So salsa and beer is, uh, is a Valley, I say a Valley favorite. I mean, I, I can thank, oh, uh, Jamie as well for introducing, um, this spot, um, 
I don't know, way back. But um, this is a place that a lot of people, I think, it's if you know, you know, it's like a good neighborhood spot. They got it's a small chain mm-hmm. throughout the valley. Um, okay, just. Mexican food, but like in big portions, you know, you yeah, recall. Yeah. Um, Good times. Yeah. Do you remember what you had? Because uh, it was quite, quite something. I think it was a chimichanga. No. I don't think so. Let me look in the archives. Okay. What did you have? Um, I think I had like a chili relleno, you know, I think ah. in an enchilada, but, you know, Again, above all else, in this case, this is where you want to go if you want just large portions, you know, at a good value. And uh, salsa and beer also has like salsa bars, so you have like various salsas at various heat levels and flavors and stuff. Um, and what else? I mean, they they also have this bean dip. I don't know if you remember having it. It's um, it's like a spicy, kind mm. of a spiced bean dip. You know, I do remember that. Yeah, it's kind of um with cheese, bean and cheese dip. It's like yeah, it's, it's a little it's addicting. Good. You know, but um, salsa yeah. and beer is the way to go. So anyway, with that, now we've conquered the San Fernando Valley, oh, now, the whole valley, <laughs> the entire valley. Okay. So now we're going to uh, make our way over uh, to um, I guess this region of Central Los Angeles. So this is you know. The majority Spot of the four, like, if you will. What's that? Spa four. Yes, exactly. As LA County workers would, would call it. That's right. Um, so in central LA, there's, you know, we're, we're going to go, we're assuming this is like, you know, this is proper, like LA proper, you know, we had the, you know, the Valley and that's part of LA mm-hmm. too, but this is this region of central LA uh, includes LA, but we're going to break it down into the v- different um, neighborhoods uh, okay. within that. So the first, uh, we're going to start in the Northeast, Northeast LA area. And, um, I have a note here. We, you know, we, um, we have our friends, yeah, obviously, same, you say. but I then see. we have, uh, we have our friends too, that are also a part of conversations and things. They're real have. friends. God. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I think we need to make a, a distinction. I think some, something definite that uh-huh. um, kind of um, distinguishes one from the other and yeah, and, do- a- and doesn't necessarily elevate one over the other, but it uh, totally does. They have a team name. <laughs> Therefore, they are the real, the, the true friends. All right. So we're just them. Just, <laughs> well, we, we are the, we are the OG friend group. Um, sure, sure. But uh, beyond that, we also have, I'm calling them Team XDR. So this is a way to uh, give them a name without actually naming them. Um, but Team XDR, <laughs> now, um, we, uh, so we tried out um, a restaurant in Eagle Rock called Chifa. And Chifa is, um, I, I think that's, it's actually the name of the style of food uh, of the intersection of, Chinese and Peruvian, you know, cuisine. So, um, hmm. that's where, you know, you'll have, I forgot, you know, this is a noodle dish here and I already forgot the name. I didn't write it down. I just remember we had like Lomo Saltado. We had this dish. We had, um, beef hearts, which are the anticucho. And we had like this order of, uh, fries. They call them Chinese fries with bomb sauce. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just remember those things. Um, but all of these dishes, you know, were part of the meal and they were definitely good. So this is, uh, again, Chifa and Eagle Rock. And it's like an Eagle Rock where it, like, kind of borders, starts to border between that and, uh, like, Highland Park. So it's... Mm, um, that makes sense. Yeah. So uh, speaking of Highland Park, then <laughs> you can... Um, we, we visited um, Joy uh, out there. Ah. Uh-huh. Yeah. So... Um, when you're in when you're joy, you can get things like the dan dan noodles, like beef mm-hmm. noodle soup, uh, the haka mochi. You remember that? That's the uh, yes, yeah, the peanut. The, uh, mm-hmm. There's and, peanut yeah. and there's sesame. Uh, That's what it was. Yeah, yeah. So those are um, those are good things to try out there. Dang dang, or sorry, bang bang with PMXDR, huh? <laughs> uh, again, not their idea, but uh, I've been replaced. <laughs> 
<laughs> you can still make a comeback, you know. I don't know. It's all part of my master plan. <laughs> Succession? Is that what it is? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The training has begun. Yeah. So um, now moving into uh, the area of uh, El Sereno, there's a lot of great spots out there, a lot of hidden spots, a lot of, you know, just... But one spot, you know, I had visited... Um, you know, during this time was a place called Secret Pizza. And um, this was a place, I don't know, it had been in, on my mind for a while. It had been out. And they, um, they have a brick and mortar out there, um, but they have kind of limited hours. I think they're open only Thursday through Saturday. But they make a really nice uh, East Coast style pizza. So oh, okay. you think, I think the guys from Jersey... Um, and, you know, but I think when you eat this, it's like, yeah, you're thinking areas like um, Jersey, uh, New Haven, you know, New York style slices. Okay. Styles that are uh, thin, slices that are thin and like crispy. You Wide. Know? Yeah. You know, it's nice. I um, I don't have a picture of the, but I, I had a, pi- I remember taking a picture of the slice uh, folded and, you know, an, and a good East Coast style pizza will fold. Um, mm. and hold really well, like, um, and that it really does. Like it has a nice, oh, nice cross on the bottom, you know, that undercarriage it's, um, yeah, you just, you just fold it and it's just, it just stays in place, you know, it doesn't yes. flop or anything, you know, it's perfect. Um, so, and apparently there's some confusion as to, you know, whether they serve slices but uh, as opposed to like whole pies Mm-mm. only, but here's your Looks answer. Looks like they do. Yeah, yeah, they do. But it's nice. It's um, you know, it's a small spot. They have, but they have a good amount of like outdoor seating and stuff. So it's out there, um, in in El Sereno. So um, that was secret pizza. Um, this next uh, this next group is actually a, a group of um, like a series of places to try, if you wanted to do like a kind of like a little taco crawl. So mm-hmm. um, this was also with a Team XDR, and um, they they wanted to try out a, um, to do like a, do something like that. So yeah, um, okay. so there are a lot of good go-to spots, um, at least for me. Like this is yeah. kind of how I would like to try to start things off. This is not obviously a definitive thing. This is not everything I would go to. Um only there's a lot more that we could explore but i think with the time that we have and maybe the the breadth of things of um just to try to cover so in okay uh we're in boyle heights in this case right so the east la you know the east region so um i think if you wanted to bring someone to try like a unique bite you know you would go to marisco salisco and you get you know that crispy shrimp taco Mm-hmm. You know, it's a nice fried shell, um, and then but with an with fresh, you know, uh, a nice hot like inside of shrimp, and you know, um, and it's kind of LA's unique bite, I think that uh, that's worth going out there. Mm. Um, you know, I I imagine that you know there's going to be obviously a group of people that doesn't dare travel to so to say those parts of town, but I don't know. Um, <laughs> they wouldn't go outside their little bubble of their region, you know? Well, it's ain't that bad. It's not. I mean, it's, it really isn't, but it's, you know, people coming from like the West side or in the Valley, you know, it's like, they'll stay in the, in their little areas there. Wouldn't be mm, um, what a shame. Well, yeah, I know exactly more for, more for us. That's true. Um, if you so the original, you know, the OG spot is there on Olympic Boulevard, and mm-hmm. um, if you walk down, you'll find several places um, on there to you know places to try. So nearby, um, there is a, a a taco stand called Tacos de Canasta El Abuelo, and they served um, steam tacos. Um, oh. So that's a particular style, um, and so they have they're, they're smaller. You know, but uh, they have different uh, flavors. You could try potato, you could try mole, chicharron. Nice. So um, they're smaller. So you just get, you know, maybe a couple of each or something. And um, 
you know, that's that's really uh, that's really it. It's a simple meal, but um, it's a good thing to a good style. And again, you another style. On the way, so you walk. I'm thinking you're walking west on uh, Olympic. So between Morisco's and Canasta, there is um, there's supposed to be uh, the birria truck, um, tacos de birria la única. Mm. And we would have gone there, but I think, uh, yeah, they were closed or they just weren't there that day. So we didn't get to try Damn. them. Yeah. That is unfortunate. Yeah, it's okay. We will get to where we had birria later, but yeah, we don't have that style, you know, that popular style, um, the red, really red, uh, you know, kind of style taco there. But, um, so from El Abuelo, then you go, we go to, uh, Carnitas del Momo. And um, the OG location in Boyle Heights. And um, that's if you want, you know, really some of the best carnitas uh, prepared in L.A., uh, that's probably where you would go. Um, They have their Monterey Park location. And I think there was some drama or just some something ongoing on there. But um, if you want a brick and mortar uh, visit, then that's you can visit them there. But. I think uh, as long as they're set up in Boyle Heights um, in front of the house that they live at and prepare out of, then I think that would be a nice, you know, better experience overall, you know. And it's it's great. I mean, it's, um, again, some of the most flavorful, tender carnitas you could, um, you could try. Um, next on that uh, tour, uh, this spot called Chiosu. So this was kind of a last-minute... Uh, Sub, not that I wouldn't have included this in a taco crawl, but just um, I, I did kind of have to change to this because the original plan, um, original spot we were going to go to was uh, was closed. Um, uh, but uh, like so th- forever or no, just no, for I'm sorry. Moment. Just okay. I just I think this was during holidays. So, you know, <laughs> holiday <laughs> hours or something. But this the place we ended up at is uh, Chiosu and um, Chiosu is uh, probably a good example um of how you uh, meet um lebanese and mexican uh together okay or maybe oaxacan i think more precisely you know on the menu you can find things that are mediterranean or lebanese you know uh like chicken shawarma you know these types of plates kebabs and things like that and then they also have tacos, you know, similar proteins they have, uh, but they also have like, and they also have like a falafel taco, you know, something mm. that, so you see this intersection again of, of these flavors and these types of foods that are coming together that influence, um, you know, a lot of the food that we uh, enjoy today, you know, even, you know, the example of like an al pastor, you know, on a, um, on a trompo, you know, is uh, the influence of, um you know, the, the shawarma on a, on a spitz, right. Of, of the Mediterranean, mm. um, uh, style. So Chiosu is a small spot, you know, nothing too fancy or anything. There's only a few seats outside. It's really a takeout window, but, um, that would be a, a good place to, to try and uh, as well. Um, one other area in Boyle Heights, um, particular is, um, Birria Nochitzlan. And my child, I, I hope you remember, we had visited there um, a while back. This is, um, I forget where, I want to say fourth and something, but it's in Boyle Heights. This is one mm-hmm. of the, um, definitely one of the original oh, yeah. uh, spots for traditional abiria. And when I say traditional, that's using goat, you know, instead of beef. And so, um, you know. You go in, it's uh, actually, it's not a very busy, I mean, at least at times that we go, not to say that there's not customers, but you know, it's a, it's a relatively quiet spot. You know, when we go, um, you get a plate of the goat media and they, they just serve it, you know, a plate of, of it with some tortillas, uh, and then just simple, um, you know, things of onion, uh, cilantro, um, some hot sauce, right? Salsa. Um, but really there to just, uh, focus and enjoy the, the goat, you know, I think, yeah, the owner had, uh, I don't know, it's been a while, but the owner, uh, had passed away, but, you know, obviously the family and, 
you know, they're still operating there. Um, so preparing that, but yeah, that, uh, that would be a place, uh, that's a good place as well to try. Um, and then this spot, there is one spot here, but it's not Boyle Heights. It's, uh, but it was part of the taco crawl. Mm -hmm. So, um, we're going, we're talking El Russo. And so, um, we found ourselves out in, um, Echo Park for that. So mm -hmm. El Russo, uh, flour tortillas, you know, uh, some of the favorites, I think. Um, and yeah. of course proteins, you have asada, you have, um, Chile, Colorado, you have, uh, chorizo. So I think, um, I think overall, I think, you know, um, the asada, I think, is the one for me that really stands out. But you know, of course, the just alone the tortillas, the flour tortillas, are just mm -hmm. really uh, very nice, soft. I mean, I think we've talked about how we enjoy a good flour tortilla, and in many cases, we probably prefer it in you know yep. over a, a corn or masa type of tortilla. But um, you know, they whatever they're doing with their style, that's an orange flour and it's an orange style. They they're doing that really well and we enjoyed that a lot so mm -hmm. so i guess that kind of knocks out you know going to boil heights and also doing a little taco crawl you know and so uh, how much of that list overlaps with your go-to like intro starter crawl like the one you did with maria for example i think a lot of these were there okay definitely um you... definitely the first three mm -hmm. um I don't remember if we went to uh, Nochitlan. Uh, I would have taken her there too if I could, but uh, mm -hmm. I'm trying to remember now. But it's all blur, you know. Okay. But, um, but if you, if someone else asked you for another one, is that the? Uh, so the other one I would I would have gone to maybe a couple. Um, of course, we talked about um, uh, La Unica, right? The mm -hmm. or uh, for the beef birria. They also make goat birria too, I believe. But. Oh, um, okay. <clears throat> uh, so Chiosu, I said, was a sub for um, another spot, and that spot was um, Tacos Arabes. So that's another that's another great example again of having the um, you know this the influence of mm -hmm. you know uh, that kind of Mediterranean Lebanese um, you know intersect with like Oaxacan you know and Mexican. So um, uh, they they have what they call the the taco. Taco Arabes. Actually, okay. and then as um, across from Marisco Salisco, there is another stand called Los Dos Chingones, and they make uh, carnitas, and uh, they are uh, popular on social for making like a, a chilaquiles, like carnitas burrito. So Ooh. you have the tortilla, and it's filled with, you know, the chilaquiles and the carnitas and you know it's like a breakfast thing so you have a fried egg in there somewhere too so um pretty pretty big um you know it's a lot but it's uh excellent right nice yeah so um yeah so the tacos arabes i think um what makes it stand out is you know of course you have things like um maybe like a pork or some sort of um, asada or something. But the the bread, uh, really, it's more of a bread than, than a tortilla. It's kind of like a pita, you know, almost mm -hmm. in this case. But, um, I, you know, I'm only aware right now, at least, you know, from my limited knowledge, you know, Tacos Arabes, um doing that style of taco, you know, at least in this region. I don't know. So, or at least something that, at least I'm aware of, and that does it well that people like enjoy and talk about. So that's, um, that would be in there too. Um, yeah, there, there definitely needs to be more taco crawls to put it that way. <laughs> of um, course. But, um, so that takes care. Like I said, we've, um, we are moving from Boyle Heights and we are moving into Chinatown. And there's one spot I wanted to talk about in Chinatown, actually a spot that has since closed. Um, oh. Yeah. It's a spot called Angry Egret, uh, is that right? Angry Egret Diner. Yeah. In Chinatown. And uh, they, their last day was on um, New Year's Eve. Oh. Um, 
but they this is from chef Wes Avila um who's known for gorilla gorilla tacos mm. um he has a couple other spots too but um I think he had closed you know they closed this because he's actually doing a new project I think in Beverly Hills of all places so he's you know it's not hurting or anything but um this spot you know is just meant to be kind of elevated you know kind of comfort type food we have this burrito um massive have, yeah pretty big pretty big um you know breakfast style burritos um we had the there's a thing a sandwich called the mctorta which is as is like a torta with like you know scrambled egg and sausage you know a cheese you know a la mcdonald's thing but um they they were also known for these really great fish tacos um just really large portion and really crispy fish and just very really fresh um the burrito here by the way i think it's called the porky i think yeah because i think it's nice yeah because you either you see this large portion of egg but then there's also a lot surrounded with uh pork as well so um and then i think one of the last things i tried there was a ceviche dish um which which i also enjoyed um but yeah i just had to try all of those things i'd only tried them a handful of times um and i'd wish you know you just wish you had a little more time to to try them out again but um you got to enjoy i guess the times that you are able to uh so yeah unfortunately they're closed now i don't know what's going to take over that spot but like i said uh that chef uh, wes avila he's um he's got other projects you right and plans coming up so um now we'll move into silver lake so we're going from chinatown going west yeah to silver lake um technically we touched echo park because of el russo but um we're going into silver lake so a couple places here uh the first is uh this restaurant uh called simone and all i can say is uh this is just another you know this is a a, a food truck that's set up um there it's across from the 99 cent store uh oh, nice. yeah north i think north of it um yeah, so this is uh, they they just make these nice fresh uh, seafood tacos. So uh, one was like a fish al pastor, one was a Baja style kind of fish taco, and the other was uh, I forgot the actual I think it's enchilada suiza. I, I just pulled that out of my head, uh, which is like a, in this case a grilled shrimp um, taco. Um, so yeah, I mean all of those all of those flavors, whatever those were, those were all just wonderful and what's nice is that they have like a little uh salsa bar like five different salsas different varying levels of heat varies of flavor each one ha is kind of unique so you know you have these little containers that you can get and like fill them up um so i just tried a little bit of everything uh and they're all they're all like really potent you know as far as flavor and spice uh -huh. yeah um whether it's like a habanero or just a, a deeper like I don't know, like our chili, the R bowl or something like just each one was just very, um, yeah, just, just nice. And just like a burst, like a nice little burst of flavor to add on to already flavorful, you know, taco, um, on tacos, we did mention this spot, uh, previously, this was a uh, mid East tacos, which again, is it's adjacent to, to where, uh, <laughs> what we were just talking about yeah um again the landmark the of the table. 99 yeah, yeah exactly so um this is a good um uh again a, a this is a good example of combining uh armenian flavors and um you know like mexican cuisine or whatever so we have a falafel taco we have i think this one was a shrimp taco there are other tacos as well other proteins that you should just get you should get the there's um you know the steak there's uh chicken um, so all those proteins, whatever those are, whether it's a taco or I think they have burritos, I need to fact check that, but, um, the tacos at least are, uh, definitely worthwhile. So that's, um, you know, mid East talk. And again, they're a relative uh, newcomer in that neighborhood. Although mm -hmm. the family that, uh, that comes from, um, is no stranger to making excellent, um, Armenian um, and Mediterranean, you know, kind of flavored, uh, cuisine. So good spot. Um, 
Then one other spot in in Silver Lake uh, mentioned from time to time is uh, Fazzo Gelato, mm-hmm. uh, which I will say again for the record that John has gone. And um, <laughs> there is photographic evidence. <laughs> it's irrefutable. Okay. Um, and this was before the advent of AI. So it's definitely there. Uh, um, also gives me an excuse to uh, mention Patrick as well, because, you know, he, uh, he kind of uh, would bring us here from time to time. Mm-hmm. But Pasa Gelato, I mean, that's uh, just a great, you know, small, you know, neighborhood spot. Um, you know, if you appreciate uh, a good, gelato that's that would be a good place to go unfortunately yeah i mean their their timeline i guess i don't know i don't really know what the timeline is but um, you know but there there's always discussion as to the when and you know what whatever it is but i hope you know i really hope it doesn't you know play out that way but you know they they might i mean you know they have their neighbors uh next door of the um Big hitter, salt and straw, super popular. You know, I still see, you know, people um, going from one spot to, I mean, there, there's just, I mean, it's unfair to just say, but anecdotally, like, there is traffic, right? There's a degree of popularity mm-hmm. for both spots. Like, I see people in both shops. Now, as to whether one serves more than the other, I personally don't know. But again, while Pazzo is still around, uh, would be good to visit there. I mean, you know, for a gelato, you get a traditional like pistachio, um, but you have, they serve different flavors every day. So I think you check their social, they'll post the the flavors that they have for that day. But, um, you know, I like the Reese's. The Reese's is nice. They have a cheesecake, you know, my chow. So uh, of those are good too. Um, and their sorbettos are, um, are also quite good. You know, I... Not that I don't like getting sorbets or things like that, but I don't know. I always gravitate towards, you know, the dairy and the cream and stuff, right? But um, mm. the the sorbettos are um, are also quite are also quite good. So Pazzo, um out there. Now, uh, now we move further west, moving into uh, Hollywood and uh, Thai Town. So. Um, the first spot actually is a Thai restaurant. Uh, well, Thai town obviously is like Thai uh, restaurants, <laughs> but uh, mm-hmm. one spot I wanted to mention there, uh, I remember going to is um, is Ruen Pear, and um, that's definitely one of the more popular spots there. But they make um, great quality uh, Thai food. Some of the things that I would get there would be the pork jerky, um, any sort of seafood soup. Um, they have a crab fried rice. And um, I forget the name of the actual dish, but it's like this crispy pork with like um, like veg like a vegetable. That's all I can, <laughs> that's all I can describe okay. it as. I mean, Whatever that is called, um, you know, that would be a good thing to get to. Uh, other typical things like the 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 lab, which is the ground beef, uh, the papaya salad. You know, those would be. Um, I'm just naming all the Thai foods, I guess. Whole menu, yeah, yeah. But 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 I think Ruin Pear is uh, one of those places that does it um, does them well. So, but uh, one uh, one place I did want to mention as well next door. Uh, so they're in a complex, like a little yeah shopping center. But yeah, um, but um, there is a a a dessert place that they own that they just they had recently opened oh. called uh, Kanam Wan. I want to say. I don't know. You know, you just read these things and you never really know how to say them and you hope you don't butcher them. But if you do, you know, I just apologize. But um, Kanawan is uh, is like Thai flavor gelato. So we're just talking about gelato. So now we're bringing that here into uh, into Thai cuisine and space. So it's a cute shop. You know, I um, I was looking. They have uh, they man, they have these. you know thai or like asian uh flavors and stuff mm-hmm. and so um i forgot the name i'm gonna look try to look it up right now but as you can see here those are watching like there's or those are listening i'll just describe like we have these three scoops of ice cream on uh thai style gelato on a hot dog bun and also with other 
uh, things like, um, you know, like jellies and uh, corn. Is that coconut jelly or? Yeah, probably. No. <laughs> <laughs> hey, right, I'm, I'm reading this article. Kanam means uh, snack in Thai, while Wan means sweet. So it's okay. a sweet snack. Yeah, isn't that nice? Um, so yeah, that's um, kind of kind of one. Let me see Wait. if I can. Yes, go ahead. Oh, looking up the flavors. I'm trying to see if I can remember. One of them is going to be a black okay. sesame for sure. Yeah, that's, obviously. That's yeah. one I remember. I think another that one. Mango sticky rice, I assume. No, actually, oh. that was one of the flavors. But this one was like um, said like egg, egg thread. I don't, I don't know if that makes sense, but definitely a more has a little bit of a savory side to it. Um, but mm-hmm. um, I'm trying to see if I can find something uh, more descriptive. But in the meantime, this other one, this third flavor, I um, I don't quite recall. Um, oh. But uh, they were obviously, um, needless to say, I, I ate everything. So mm-hmm. um, that was uh, that was. Uh, Good. I'm trying to remember the name of the actual dessert or how this was presented. Uh, this hot dog style. <laughs> um, okay, Thai style gelato kanom pang. So that's the three flavor gelato yeah. with coconut jelly, sweet corn, sweet sticky rice, grass jelly, palm seeds. Yeah. Nice. Um, now as to that third Almost flavor, jelly. if I'm gonna remember, I don't know, but uh, good luck to you. Um, <laughs> But but a, a fun spot, a great spot to go like at when you're done uh, with uh, with dinner or whatever your meal at uh, Ruin Pear. So mm. um, interestingly, my parents go to Thai restaurant. Isn't that same plaza? Uh, yeah. What's the name of that? Thai patio. Nice. Okay. Like right across. I didn't even because I, I saw the picture of the front. Mm-hmm. And it looked so familiar. I had to yeah. double check and was like, yeah, I, I've been there. Uh, not there, well, you've but been, I've been in that plaza many times. Yeah. So next time, you know, uh, ask your parents if they'd be willing to go to Ruin Pair. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, while we're in Thai Town, uh, one other spot I want to mention is um, a place called Hang Hang uh, Chicken Rice. And uh, as the name kind of suggests, they serve uh, like Hainan style chicken rice. Mm-hmm. Um, so sense. in this case, um, I'm ordering the a half and a half and half plate. There's a, a dark meat, you know, chicken, and then there's also half of that plate, which is um, crispy fried pork. So mm. either way, can't go wrong. Um, and then they also serve, you know, a bowl of um, like a chicken broth as well. And then you have, you know, your different. Uh, uh, little top, you know, things to pair it with some ginger, some scallions, you know, things like that. Um, but you can see here the, it, it's a sizable, it's a sizable plate, you know, served on top of a bit of, uh, you know, well-flavored, uh, chicken rice. So, um, this place has gotten very, has been very popular. Um, definitely gotten a lot of attention. Um, so just be aware of that. Um, and it's not too far. It's just maybe a block or so west of where Ruin Pear is. On, oh, really? On Hollywood. So, yeah, that'd be the be a place to go. Now, while we are technically in Hollywood, um, I wanted to shift over to East Hollywood. Now, this, uh, like I said, this, a lot of these pictures are unfortunately potato quality, but hopefully it just gets the point across. Um one place uh, I'd been wanting to try and uh, did get to try um, recently was uh, Safi's. And Safi's comes from uh, the owner, chef and owners who um, run uh, Bestia and Bavel, you know, mm-hmm. just very uh, Mediterranean, you know, uh, f- you know, forward flavors and menu. So this one is um, technically a more casual spot. Um, you know, they have some dining indoors and outdoors, but they have like a large bar counter area, you know, you get a lot of good drinks and things like that. Um, but they, uh, and they have a lot of great dishes. Um, what we see here is this, um, this pita with, uh, with lamb, you know, very, yeah, it's very fresh, very flavorful, um, you know, lamb, uh, they call it a sandwich. So I'll go with that. Um, but what's not pictured here is a, um, 
Yeah, thank you. <laughs> what they picture here, not pictured here, is the uh, the hummus um, that was also consumed um, with, along with like a couple of slices of um, uh, it's bread, definitely bread, but it's a very good. It's it's a it's very excellent, like very um, soft. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's just very fresh, very soft. Um, um, you know, uh, house made bread. Um. Yes that pairs well it just you know you scoop up the hummus with it it's just um it's pretty much perfectly paired there um they also have soft serve which i happened to try which was also quite nice now um now we jump to uh a little south to k-town um some old older uh familiar grounds there i'd say my chow uh, oh yeah and- Two spots I wanted to mention. Uh, one was um, Korean barbecue. Can't uh, can't talk about uh, K Town without K barbecue. <laughs> and so one spot I'd re- visited is called We uh, Korean Barbecue. Um, that sounds familiar. Yeah, they're down on um, Western, no Vermont. They're on Vermont and uh, more south. Yeah, I've been there. Closer to. A, like across the street from Eight what is it game bid. Bid? yes yeah. exactly yeah, yes yeah. Mm-hmm. so yeah. um i i enjoyed that because um yeah place nice you know they have they have different tiers right of uh of the ace but mm-hmm. um the top the highest tier is only, is like 40 bucks you know includes all the meats um and i don't know if you happen to see it or you know had it they have two extra there are two items that are included in that top tier which are um, K-pop inspired, uh, you know, uh, meats. I don't remember this. Yeah, I, I, I think one is from um, Blackpink and um, the other one's BTS, I think. Of course, of course. And I, and I think it's this. just like some protein, like let's say pork belly or yeah, like sliced pork or something. And then they add this uh, like a sauce on there. I think that's kind of like what the move is, you know, for those. Okay. But um. I think overall, like the restaurant itself was for 40 bucks, you know, is, uh, got a good selection and it includes, it also includes, uh, you know, fountain drinks, which I think was a nice, uh, addition yeah. as well. Okay. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I enjoyed it and the quality of, the, of the, of the proteins and stuff are, you know, quite good. So I enjoyed those. Um, now while in Cape town, we'll move back up a little North, uh, on Western, to Western Doma noodles. And actually we were just there recently. Uh, we saw, um, uh, John Carmen and, uh, the Cedos. They were there too. Oh, wow. yeah. So, um, we, uh, brought them there to Western Doma and this is just, um, you know, this is one of those places. It's a good, um, that makes great like comfort food. I mean, you know, it's a mom and pop, you know, operation, the the way you know our host was very uh very kind very nice very accommodating um and uh you know the stuff the things we ordered we ordered a lot of soups you know it's cold weather so it's it calls for for different soups so i got an oxtail soup we shared like a seafood pancake uh chris got this like chicken stew that we all tried a little bit of and that was a nice kind of spicy chicken um but uh, cooked very nicely uh, with, yeah, with a little bit of spice in there. Um, but, uh, yeah, this is just one of those places that, again, like a good neighborhood spot, you know, may not make all the lists and stuff, but it, they make great food. So, okay. yeah, you see there towards the middle is like the seafood pancake. Um, on the left is the chicken stew. What did else they wear? So in the front, what I ordered was the, the oxtail. Mm. Um there was some bibimbap order. There was a uh, nice. squid, oh, things like that. So, yeah. Love the purple rice. Yes, yes. The multi grain rice. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so now uh, moving into mid city. This That's mid city and some of the other areas we're going to talk about are definitely not areas I get to visit too often. I think mostly like out of convenience or whatever, you know, like mm-hmm. I'm not very proximal there i mean let alone areas we just talked about like the sgv in the valley or whatever but <laughs> i think um mid city particularly because it's you know kind of inland you know it yeah it's hard know, to get to in general yeah exactly so um but 
I guess, you know, over time I managed to visit a few spots there. So I'll just kind of mention those. One of them is a, um, a place called Stevie's on Pico. And, um, you know, I had this itch. I've had the itch, of course, for, um, for Creole, mm-hmm. you know, New Orleans cuisine. And um, I've tried a few places, you know, locally and, and elsewhere. But, you know, this is a place that has uh, definitely come up in a place that I've wanted to try uh, since and recently got to. And so what we see here, um, I would tell you right now, though, to start like that place is it's not very large the place, but and it's very busy. So you mm-hmm. need to just make sure you time it right or you're patient or whatever, because even being seated for one, I, you know, the table I was at was literally just made for one. Thankfully, I, whether that was Tomo. whether that was intentional or not, like, yeah, I do. Um, she'll cry for me, but uh <laughs> You know, I was lucky to find that spot. I mean, all the booths, all the other tables were easily mm-hmm. taken. There's a lot of people. There's like maybe one table outside. There's a lot of people like ordering takeout. It just it was just a very busy day. But um, what we have here is uh, the gumbo, seafood gumbo, you know, and um, having trying to recall an experience from new orleans i mean you know this was uh this really hit the spot i'd say it's a good um you know good roux a good soup base um and then you can see very clearly a lot of the the seafood that's piled on there yeah um and you know whether the shrimp or the uh the crab um those you know those are all very 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 good and behind there actually i also had a po boy um and uh, as far as flavor goes, yeah, I think this really came close to what I enjoyed uh, from Po' Boy, like in New Orleans. You know, just something, uh, just uh, in this case, I had catfish. So the catfish was really nicely f- spiced and, you know, seasoned and um, fried. Um, size-wise, still up for debate. I'm still looking for a, a s- more sizable uh, Po' Boy. Um mm-hmm. But, um, you know, they really load it with a, a side of fries. So it really, it do, really does fill them. I enjoy those, uh, those meals. I think I also had, uh, beignets there. The mm-hmm. beignets were different, um, in that, uh, the beignets that I, beignets that I had, uh, tried have been more, um, you know, they're airy, but they're more fluffy, you know, they mm-hmm. have, these beignets were more, um, like flaky, dense oh flaky yeah yeah interesting so, yeah so uh they're more the the pockets of air are just there there's more air pockets um but it's in a flaky like kind of um yeah kind of pastry mm-hmm. there so um but overall yeah i think the prices here price point wise it is a little higher i think you could get away with sharing these like i could like even us maybe order a third entree we could we could share this um i think price wise it might be yeah something you'd need to you know maybe think about or whatever if you want to enjoy that on your own or with someone so but that's uh stevie's on um on pico uh one other place here we want to talk no there are a couple actually the next one is actually a pizza spot also in mid-city called pizzeria say and um, mm-hmm. all I can say about this is this is more what people have described as like Japanese Neapolitan. So, you know, that Neapolitan style, it's, um, you know, a thin crust, not necessarily crispy, um, but it's, you know, um, it's got a, there's like a little bit of a char in, in its uh, in its cook. So um, this one mm-hmm. has garlic and mushroom. So okay. obviously the mushroom, uh, it's like a more meaty kind of uh, quality. Um but yeah, this was um, this was very well made. I mean, I think um, this place is not again, it's not a large space, but I think it is meant to be a more kind of elevated uh, kind of spot. Even though it is casual in its vibe, there is a little elevated quality to it. Um, and I think personally, I think if you're there just to try it out, I would just get takeout because I think, at least in my case. Um, uh, you know, to dine in would have probably taken longer to, mm. you know, get that settled. But, uh, you know, getting takeout only 
was was relatively quick for food to prepare. So I just wanted to try the pizza, you know. I just I didn't necessarily need anything else. So um, this was a uh, this was a good um, a good spot. So yeah, it's kind of Japanese Neapolitan. I don't. I'd like to try it again just to try some other types of flavors and just try to mm. see how like what that really means. But um, yeah, it's it's um, it's fun to try. Um, one other spot in mid city, um, for pizza is Apollonia's and, um, they, they still have a moment. They've had a big moment. Um, they're down on Wilshire, like near the tar pits or whatever, like kind of in that area. Sounds so, familiar. yeah. So, I mean, they're not a big, again, big spot. I think a lot of people just order for, you know, usually going to get takeout. There's not a lot of seating. I think they only take cash, which is crazy. But uh, <laughs> they make, I think people who have it, they argue that they make some of the best slices or square pizzas. So, uh. and they also, uh, they also uh, serve stuff with hot honey, if you recall. Nice. Yeah. So I've, um, ever since the time I tried it, I've been very into hot honey pizzas. Good, good. Um, mm-hmm. I've used to, I passed this all the time on my way to work. When I was oh, working well, I at think the other office, working. yes, that's right, that's right. And I, it's so unassuming. It's so I it, never would have guessed. It's unassuming, and I think like the hours are a little like a uh, little mm. off, not off, but like they're not like typical hours, let's say. And of course, you know they could sell out this and that. So, mm. um, and again, cash only. So got to be ready. Yeah. Um, but Apollonia's, I, I I enjoyed those too. You know, as far as like a. You know, for the slices, like a thin slice, a good crust, something that folds nicely, that's a great one. And then um, as far as a square slice as well, uh, can't go wrong with either. Um, now we continue. We're still in mid-city. A couple more places here. Uh, one is uh, Irv's Burgers. So um, I don't think, yeah, I don't think we've been to Irv's. We haven't talked about Irv's. And actually Irv's is really originally based in, um, let's say West Hollywood. And that original location is still there. I think the original mm-hmm. owner, uh, was considering on closing shop and retiring. I, th- oh. you know, whether because it was time to retire or there was, you know, like, you know, the cold COVID thing, you know, and mm-hmm. getting hard, but, um, someone, I believe they, you know, they found a business partner or something to, um, and kind of, continued operation. So the owner's still there. They're still serving and cooking, but in the West Hollywood area. But I passed by here um, on my way from uh, back uh, from some of the places we talked about, but I was on my way back. And this uh, Irv's is at the corner of um, Olymp, no, Pico and uh, La Brea. And, um, if you recall, well, that's not too far. This gives me another excuse to talk about Patrick. This is um, this is near where he is, and mm-hmm. this actually was the former location of Top Round. Now I don't know if you, uh, if we had gone there before or if we've gone there together. No. Um. So Top Round, it's like a, it's like an Arby's. They do like roast beef sandwiches. Um, okay. And they do them like smaller, like sliders. So um. But um, I guess they since closed, and Irv's is now taken over as this other location. Yeah. Okay. Because mm-hmm. I, I used to pass by this all the time too. I, yeah. This is not unassuming. I just never. I was always late to work, so I, <laughs> I never stopped by. That's funny. Yeah. So um, what we <laughs> seen there is just uh, a burger. You know, just a double burger, um, cheeseburger, and uh, in that. I guess just a good, it's just a good example of what a good burger is. I mean, I don't know. I can't, it's got shredded lettuce. It's got tomato, pickle, you know, sauce, um, American cheese. I mean, you know, I, I have not been to the original herbs, uh, in West Hollywood. So I, I don't really know. I don't have that same experience or whatever there, but I'll just say that I did enjoy this burger. So, um, um, even having a full day of eating beforehand, I still mm. enjoy this burger. So, um, okay. but again, like I said, it gave, it gave me a good uh, excuse to kind of reminisce a little bit. Uh, there. How does it? Uh, 
compare to in and out because that looks like the most direct comparison. You think so? Um, based on based on the website, yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, price wise, it's uh, definitely not at that price point. Um, uh-huh. I think uh, as far as flavor, I mean, it's a good. It's I, it would be a step above an in and out. I think. Okay. Like you know, it's um, it's a little heartier. I think. Um, mm. you know, size and serving wise. So, okay. um, the, the meat I think is, uh, cooked a little, has a little more sear to it. Um, so just, just a little more flavorful, I think. Okay. Yeah. I'm not complaining about in and out burger, but, um, yeah, if you're trying to compare those, I think that's what I would, I'd say. Okay. Um, now, speaking of burgers, we're still on there, and I think this is still technically mid city, but just some other there are other pockets, you know, in that um, uh, that it would be in as well. But this uh, this place is called OKC Burgers, I think OKC Smash Burgers, something like that. Um, it's on um, Washington um, near, I would say Normandy. Something like that. So um, what you see here is a picture of the burger taking a picture across the street of like yeah. the cemetery there. Cemetery, yeah. Does that is that scene familiar to you? If we're talking, if I'm talking about Washington and uh, Normandy. Normandy, yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's um, right off this left freeway. Yeah, exit there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So OKC is, uh, I think, a relative newcomer in the Smash Burger scene, and I think it has uh, garnered a lot of popularity. Um, I mean, a Smash, a good Smash Burger done well can be, you know, can get a lot of talk. So, um, so this takes place is it's actually in like a ghost kitchen. So um, the building that they do stuff out of, yeah, I I don't know if they're the only one there or there's others there, but yeah, they. Um, they you you would order like on uber eats let's say you pre-order somewhere and then you would pick it up and pick it up Mm -hmm. yeah so this they were so this ghost kitchen is actually the former space um um, i mean there are many spaces i mean many tenants there but one of the notable ones was le coop uh Uh yeah they had uh they had worked out of there before served out of there before before their Mm -hmm. um their western location and um but now we have OKC. So you can see here OKC it's got a, it's got a smash burger. They offer like different types of um meat. So they're they're like wagyu focused, but they have like an American wagyu, they have a Jap- uh Australian wagyu and a Japanese Ooh. wagyu. So obviously at different price points. I think this was like the American wagyu. Um so you have the fried onion, you have the cheese. Um, that's pretty simple. You know, I think there's pickle in there too. Uh, the bun is a little different, a little heartier. There's like a glossy finish on there. Um, so it, it's, yeah, it's a little heartier than a typical like white plushy bun. So, Mm. um, it, it, it lends to like a different texture, I think for the burger. It's sizable. It, It is sizable. So, um, but yeah, okay. See out there. Now, um, now we are moving a little south, and there are a couple places south side that I'd like to talk about. One spot in uh, kind of the South LA area um, is along the uh, the Crenshaw, what they call the Crenshaw Corridor, um, and one of the best examples, I think, or notable examples, is Earl's on Crenshaw. Uh, Earl's is uh, just is a restaurant that's been there for I don't know. A long time it's a it's a well-known neighborhood spot and um they um they are known for serving uh hot dogs um so they have hot dogs they have chili dogs you know and whether it's like uh beef hot dogs or uh what i had in my case is a chicken link uh hot dog um you know so you'll have your protein on there you'll ha- and then you know you have the option to you know, have it with, uh, with the chili, the cheese, the onion. So, um, you know, that's, um, it, it's a very, yeah, it's a very well known and, and, um, well, uh, loved, uh, spot in that, uh, community. So, um, 
that's uh, that's Earl. So yeah, for me, I had the chicken link. Uh, I also had some dessert. They had some slices of cake there. Actually, the cake happened to be uh, vegan. Vegan. Yeah. yeah so I so, uh, got thrown off there, but you know, I <laughs> I still uh, I still enjoyed it. Uh, okay. So. But you can, again, you can get whatever, uh, there are different types of, uh, and they have like turkey burgers. They have, yeah, they have, um, just different types of, uh, um, proteins and stuff that you can, uh, you can try. Um, so Earl's is out there. And then while I was there as well, uh, there's a restaurant called, um, my two cents. And my two cents is, um, I would say like a very casual, almost, um, just like a casual dining spot, almost, almost diner style, but not, not quite, but it is casual. Um, and from there I would, uh, I ordered the, uh, oxtail tacos. They have, um, other types of foods as well. Not talk, not necessarily tacos, but I, I was reading this article about, um, you know, uh, rest, you know, how, um, how tacos have, um, kind of, uh, and, you know, intersected with, uh, um, everything. I, yeah. Everything. Yeah. Including, um, you know, black cuisine as well. So this is, uh, an example of that. So, um, it was later in the evening, you know, just, just got that uh, sweet tea. Uh, we have, nice. some dirt, uh, there's some dirty rice there as well. Um, but the oxtails were, were like really nicely cooked. You know, you can see it's like a really, um, he- uh, healthy, uh, um, or heaping serving of like, uh, like parsley and whatever on there, but it's mm-hmm. not, it's not like, uh, it's not really overdone. It, it just really oh, okay. helps to pare down the richness of, uh, of the oxtail. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's, um, it's a good spot, a good spot, um, uh, dinner or, um, breakfast, brunch type things, um, would be good too. And then they also served up some, uh, cornbread as well. So, nice. um, yeah. Um, now as we move South, we are moving into, uh, the, uh, neighborhood of Watts. So one spot, honestly, the, the one spot that comes to mind whenever, um, you know, food wise, when I think of Watts is, uh, this restaurant, Hawkins House of Burgers, and uh, they're a neighborhood staple as well. Uh, they make some really gnarly burgers, like really, um, yeah, big burgers. So uh, this particular one has, I think it's called the Colossal, comes with like pastrami, as nice. you can see. Um, but any of their burgers, they'll be like, they'll be generous. They're they're pretty hearty. They're, yeah, they're sizable. Um their fries are great too. Um, yeah, it's it's like in this small little strip of road, like uh, in in Watts. It's in a it's you know what was uh, it's really a house, you know, kind of converted to kitchen and stuff uh, like that. Okay. Um, and it's very popular. Like you know, you'll see like at peak times, you know, this small stretch of road will be packed with cars, and you know, I learned that across just across, you know, is like this lot where mm-hmm. um they have they have um they do other business things there but you can try to find parking for um you know while you're waiting um but it it can get pretty hairy uh if you know as far as parking goes so just make sure you time it right but i don't think you'll be disappointed you know when you have a hawkins burger and um from what you uh can see here um you can also take in a little bit of uh culture i guess and visit the watts towers which has a fascinating history in itself um but uh you know you just it's just nearby you just drive a couple minutes um after you pick up your food and then you just and then you just enjoy it there because there's really no seating or anything at hawkins you just pick up your food and then you go so uh yeah that's um yeah i i don't remember my child yeah we probably uh need to pay a visit you know out there um because i don't think we've had that chance yet never been but it looks good yeah it looks. It is great. really small though it's super small i mean the 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 spot itself the street i'm talking about it's yeah uh, that whole space is just you know it's crazy so you need to what's nice is that they open as early as eight o'clock you know 
So if you can get there like super early or, you know, you go there on a you know, random weekday afternoon or something, you're probably uh probably in good in good shape, you know. Um <laughs> we're getting close to wrapping this up, so don't worry. Um we got a couple of places I want to talk about. We're kind of entering the so I could say that we've conquered central Los Angeles. We've um uh huh. Yeah. Sure, sure. We've really uh really stampeded through or something. Um, so now we've, uh, now we're entering, uh, West side. There's a couple only pla- couple places here, um, to mention. And this was namely, uh, my excuse to, um, uh, give a shout out to Oliver. I think we mentioned uh, previously, mm-hmm. but yeah, Oliver is, uh, Patrick's cousin, but he was nice enough to, um, yeah, to sh- show me around, uh, Culver city and, um, good spots over there so one of the places we tried out there was uh serviteca and so we had this uh, serving of uh, like loaded fries these asada fries you can see um you can see it loaded with the asada the guac you know the salsas and on a bed of uh of, of fries uh yeah so he was originally gonna buy like one for me and something else for him but i'm like you know <laughs> So I'm I'm yeah, glad it kind of, I'm down. glad it kind of played out a little differently, but um, yeah. But the other thing he was nice enough to get me was uh, this um, this small order from um, Honey Kettle, a uh, Honey's Kettle, um, also in Culver. Uh, just a nice uh, we talked about previously, but again, we you want to get um, you know they have great fried chicken, but you also want to make sure you try the biscuit. So this is a plain biscuit, uh, but they also have like a blueberry biscuit that people really enjoy. Ooh. Um, like I said, this is like a fluffy biscuit, so, uh, nice and moist and yeah, it's just, um, it's some, it's a good, uh, it's a great biscuit. So, I mean, and great, great food uh, from there. So can't, um, you can't go wrong. So, I mean that, uh, so I could say we've con- uh, conquered the West side too, obviously. So, oh, okay. yeah, we Wait. are, we are really, um, Really, really making progress here, making strides, and um, really taking over uh, <laughs> the uh, the food scene. The greater Los Angeles area. That's correct. Yeah, the greater metropolitan Los Angeles complex con or something. So, um, like I said, this was not a ranked list. This is not like a favorites list. I but I can tell you that everything I had here, I uh, I really enjoyed. Um, for their own reasons, you know, the food itself, the context, I think, and the community and, uh, um, yeah, just the culture, I think, uh, the society, societal things of, um, what they contribute to, uh, the people around it and in LA and beyond. So there's, uh, definitely more that we get to, um, that we'll talk about. We'll discuss, uh, we're going to conquer the rest of LA and even a little bit of the OC. Um, oh no. We'll get there, but um yeah, there's there's uh I don't know, let me let me ask you what from all the rambling here of all the places that uh I've talked about, was there anything that kind of maybe stood out to you uh, or anything you want to recall from there? Uh personally, I am a dessert guy. I love desserts. Uh that Tenem one sounds very interesting. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, definitely want to take a look at that place myself. Okay, yeah. So we have um, we have all these places. Um, I think what I'm tempted to do at some point, maybe I'll just throw these all into some sort of map. Um, oh, nice. You know, and uh, plot, and maybe I should do that. You know, that's something that I I realize I I should do, but I haven't done. But it makes sense. I should just like just save places on a map that I've yeah. been to. You know, it doesn't matter like whether they, you know, whether it was memorable or not, whether it was you yeah. know good or not. Just places. You know, so um, curious how that map is going to look. Yeah, it'll look. Um, is there like, a maximum number of pins you can put on? I I don't think there are. I I think there's a, a certain limit Perfect. that Google's database can hold, but that's okay. But for now, for now, we've come to the end of another episode. 
So thank you, Mai Chao, and thank you to our few and only fans for joining us. We're excited to bring you more of our adventures with good food and good people. Make sure to reach out. We're here on Instagram. I'm at Dumb and Hungry. He's at my underscore chow. Why don't you just slide right in there? Uh, you can email us at hi at Dumb and Hungry, where you can leave us your feedback and your love letters. Um, you can find the videos on YouTube. Won't you like, subscribe, and smash? You can also find us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and wherever else fine podcasts are served. But until next time, I'm Angelo, the Dumb and Hungry. I'm my chow. And on your next food adventure, remember to try one of each. Hey, I wanted to uh, just mention a few other things. <laughs> oh, no. Because I uh, clearly have more to kind of um, get out of my system here. Um not LA, but uh, just a few other places that um, it visited. Uh, I think I mentioned to you that I had uh, you know gone to Vegas uh, around mm -hmm. the holidays, uh, also with Team XDR. Um, some some places we uh, had visited. Um, I wanted to mention one of which is uh, Lotus of Siam, uh, which oh, is yeah, you a made it out there. which is a Thai restaurant out there. And um, the things to get definitely would be these crispy prawns. Mm -hmm. And the prawns are like really great. They, um, you can, um, you just eat everything, the whole, sh you know, shell and all, mm -hmm. you know, okay. um, they have a crispy rice. If, uh, gosh, I, they have a, a duck curry. I think it was a Penang style curry with duck. Um, and then for dessert, you know, mangoes weren't in season, but they were nice enough to just prepare us like, you know, mango sorbet, uh, with the rice, with the sticky rice. And it still tasted okay. great. Still tasted yeah. great. Oh, good. Um, Lotus of Siam. This other place, have have you been to the Taco Bell Cantina um, in Vegas? I have not. No. Sadly enough. So apparently, uh, well, I guess that's one step ahead of you in this case, considering even considering I don't uh, I don't drink too much, but uh, they they're chock full of uh, fun drinks over there. Oh yeah. So Do they have a Baja Blast drink? Yeah, absolutely. I think that's probably what I got. Yeah. Nice. Can you show it? They sell it in cans now, by the way. Nice. That that's a miracle. Oh, like, yeah, you realize yeah, like in is. years past they uh yeah, it's like it was always like a Taco Bell exclusive. Taco Bell exclusive. Exactly. Yeah. So I don't know when that changed. Like or when they started just recently. to do that. Yeah. Okay. Like within the last few months. Well, you must have cases just stocked up, ready to go. Sadly, I'm at the end of my stock at the moment. Uh, last time I went grocery oh, shopping, I couldn't find any <laughs> running out. Everyone's got the same idea, man. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, but... they they do. Um, there's a Baja Blast, uh, whatever, and then. I mean, I think they're like you can add your own like alcohol oh. in there, like okay. so. I think there's you could do like rum or vodka or things like that. Um, so yeah, those. That's the canteen. That's the cantina. It's across from the Cosmo from where we stayed at Cosmopolitan. Um, so it's like easy to get to, you know, so. And I think I forgot which food I had, but, you know, mm -hmm. I, I rarely have Taco Bell. So um, maybe, maybe it was a, I don't know. Was it a, what did they have? Got <laughs> Mexican pizza. <laughs> maybe. Or a gord. No, they have gorditas. Uh, Chalupa. Chalupa. Some multi-layered, you know, something, okay. uh, um, combination of things. Um, and then speaking of uh, the Cosmo, um, you remember when we visited there? We, we, we stopped by the Cosmopolitan and we had um, Hattie B's, right? Yeah, um, yeah. So I'm not talking about Hattie B's, but uh, if you are there, that's fine. So there, you know, in the Cosmopolitan, there's... Uh, Hattie B's is like in this kind of small complex of like food stand style places. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There, if you search, I mean, if you look a little uh, more into that area, there is an entrance to a speakeasy called the oh. ghost donkey. And so it's a small, it's a small Sketch. spot. Like not even like, I, I wouldn't think you could get like a dozen people in there or something. Okay. Maybe, maybe standing, maybe a couple dozen, but like, you know, the seating or whatever. Uh, it's small, but um, mm -hmm. yeah, if you're looking for something, uh, a little extra something to 
uh, to explore. Um, I can't believe you throw it out there. Ghost donkey. Are you not supposed to? I don't. Uh, that's the point of speakeasies. Oh. They're supposed to be secret. I think I. Uh, no. I think I ruined it. Well, yeah, look uh, at, I'm looking at it now. <laughs> they have a donkey statue in, it, in there. Exactly. So. Um, I don't remember drinks we had. I thought, but you know, again, I I don't have a quite the palate to appreciate uh, too many drinks. So, but um, you know, everyone had a good time. So uh, good. So, so as did I. But those were just some of the places uh, that come to mind. Obviously, there's, you know, I'm going a little off topic here. You know, in Las Vegas, uh, I don't know mm-hmm. if you know uh, or familiar with Keith Lee. He's a content creator in uh, very big on TikTok. I mean, you'll see him on Insta and whatever too, but he's, his biggest platform is TikTok. So he's based in mm-hmm. Las Vegas and he's a former, um, I think, UFC type or MMA oh, okay. style fighter. Um, but he had really come to popularity more so with his these food reviews that he does. And um, oh, okay. he's kind of created this thing called the Keith Lee Effect. Mm-hmm. Where like any sort of review of a restaurant will like make or break you, um, <laughs> and you know he focuses a lot on uh like the like mom and pop like small spots like local spots, um so you know doing a review if he really likes you you know and he'll rate it you know he gives a rating one to ten and you know he'll give you know kind of his opinion on those things and he says he's like a normal guy you know he's pretty chill and casual but. You know, he may come off that way, but like definitely his word definitely has a lot of weight to it. So, okay. um, but yeah, I, I just remember like he's based out there, but he's, he's done like visits to different cities other and, cities. and okay. it's been interesting to see like the, his experience there and like how other creators and other people like comment on that because some experiences are better, some experiences are worse. And mm. so it's nice, kind of interesting to see how people discuss, you know, really like how is it a reflection of the state you know of that of that area you know based on okay. his experience um anyway but uh that's uh that was about more about now vegas so anyway anyway more to come uh so don't worry hold on tight uh there's we'll we'll, uh, we'll be back <laughs> 